All right, so what we got here is a 2011 Dodge Caravan. Uh, now this has been a real problem vehicle for us. It's very intermittent, the issue that's happening. Um, according to our customer, the wipers will not shut off. The dash lights up like a Christmas tree and uh, the windows and, and door locks don't work. Uh, luckily, when I came pull it into shop this morning, it was acting up, so we'll be able to see exactly what it's doing here. So, as you can see, the wipers are off, and they're just, they're staying on. Dash is lit up, and we have a no bus message on the dash. And actually, just like that, it stops acting up. <laughs> so, that's kind of what we're dealing with. Uh, yeah, that, all right, so that, uh, perfect example of what we're dealing with. So hopefully this thing starts acting up again during my testing because uh, she's not doing anything anymore. I think what we're going to do though is uh, scan the vehicle for codes. It should uh, should have set some sort of codes with the no bus message there. That kind of indicates a um, communication issue with this vehicle. So we'll uh, start by hooking up the scan tool and uh, see what kind of codes we got. All right, actually we just got really lucky because this thing just started acting up again uh, when I came over here to grab my scan tool. So. Get her hooked up real quick, and hopefully we can catch it before it stops acting up again. But you can see it's doing the same thing here. Dash is lit up again. Wipers are off. And it looks like the radio is off too. So it wouldn't be surprised if it's all on the same bus. So let's get this scan tool hooked up under here. And uh, take a look, see what we got for codes. All right, now let's open up our scan tool we're going to be using the iTech 2 the factory scan tool again huh only one DTC set I was kind of expecting more than that but let's take a look ah okay uh -huh. only one DTC but we can see another issue right away here is this uh, this entire bus for the cluster radio and the HVAC and I think those are the door modules there they're all offline, and that, that kind of makes sense with what we're seeing here. Um, the radio not working, uh, the windows and door locks not working, and the cluster being lit up. It would all make sense that they're on the same bus. Now the wiper is going off. You're probably wondering, what does that have to do with any of these? Uh, on these vehicles, um, the wipers work um, on a LIN bus from the multifunction switch, and it goes to the cluster, and then the cluster then relays that message to the TIPM, and the TEPM relays it to the wiper to turn it on and off. Uh, so if you can't have, uh, if you don't have communication with the cluster, you're not going to have any wipers, and it's just going to default to uh, staying on full blast like that, just as like an emergency backup. So without the cluster, there's no way for that LIN bus message from the multifunction switch to get to the TEPM. So that, that's why they're running right now. But um, let's go take a look at what one code is we got. U0010 can interior bus that makes sense so um, we can go look that code up but um, I don't think it's really necessary right this moment just because we, we can kind of see what the issue is here what we are going to have to do is take a look at the actual wiring diagram figure out where the easiest place to get the wiring is and uh, scope it to see what we got going on all right so we're going to be using the pico scope again this vehicle and I think I'm going to pick it up at the uh, underside of the tip-em there. Um, it's kind of easy to get at. It doesn't take too much work to pull the tip-em up. It's easier than pulling the interior apart right at the second. So I'm um, just going to pop the hood here, get everything uh, out in the open, and hook the scope up to it. See what we got going on. All right, so we've got our scope hooked up here. I was able to uh, pick up the wiring underneath the fuse panel here. Um, probably can't see it very well but uh, it, it's a, a white with a uh, orange tracer and a white with a gray tracer one of those connectors under there that's the can interior bus for this thing so uh, all I have to do is turn the key on and go take a look at the scope make sure it's still doing it yep we're good all right let's have a look and see what it looks like on the scope all right, we got our scope hooked up here, monitoring can high and low at the tip them. Um, monitoring while the vehicle is acting up. Uh, now what I did was I just paused the screen here and saved it uh, just in case this thing stops acting up again. 
Um, anyways, it looks like we're, uh, we've got our can high and low shorted high to uh, right around battery voltage. Um, yeah, about 11 volts, 11 volts on each, looks like. Yeah, so close enough battery voltage. Um, that's likely a module shorting the CAN bus high. Um, it's very unlikely that it's a wiring issue because uh, you'd have to have two wires shorted together or rubbed through together. Um, one of them would have to have 12 volts on or battery voltage on or something like that. So highly unlikely that we have a wiring issue. Now, if it was shorted low to uh, shorted to ground, you had no voltage on either circuit then, it gets a little more tricky. Um, you, you can have a, a wire rubbed through touching down on a piece of the dash frame. Um, or anything like that, uh, so that, that could make it a little bit more difficult to uh, to find. Because um, then you'd have to go searching through harnesses. So this is kind of best case scenario here uh, with a shorted high. So basically, all we're going to have to do now is uh, go and find each module. I'm fairly certain after looking at the wiring diagrams that uh, this thing only has five modules modules on that interior bus: uh, the two door modules, the cluster radio, and the HVAC. So that makes it fairly easy. Um, just gonna have to see where those are. I mean, the cluster, the radio, and the HVAC is easy enough, but uh, I'm thinking the door module is probably uh, in behind the door skins. Uh, it's usually where they are. So, uh, just gonna have to go look and make sure, and uh, then start taking it apart and gain access to it, so we can start unplugging them. All right, now that we have all of our panels off, we have our driver's door module here behind the driver's side door panel. Uh, same with on the passenger side. The module's just uh, right there. Obviously we got our radio here. Uh, the cluster, um, you can kind of get at it through here. I can fit my arm in there. It might be difficult for, for other people, but uh, I can fit my arm back there and disconnect the connectors. Um, if you need to take the cluster out, uh, according to service info, this whole dash panel's gotta come off. Um, and I'm not about to do that today, so um, I just kind of wedge my arm in there to unplug it. Um, and then we also have our HVAC module, but I don't have my wedge kit here with me right now, so I wasn't able to get any of that stuff off. I don't want to break it, so um, we'll just leave it for now, and uh, I'll uh, uncover it later if I have to. Um, but if I unplug every other module, and, and these are the only modules on the bus. There's the door module, the cluster, the radio the door module and the HVAC module. There's nothing else really. So if I unplug all these other ones and uh, nothing happens, it still stays acting up. Then we kind of know that our HVAC module is going to be the culprit more than likely. So uh, we'll just leave it for now. But uh, the only thing left to do now is pretty much drive it until it acts up. So not much we can do, but wait. So this is the issue we're having. We finally uh, got it to act up. We have all the door panels off uh, to access everything on the medium speed bus. Um, just gonna start pretty much unplugging stuff one by one. Um, I already started with the easiest one, which is the driver's side door panel here. Um, I guess we'll go with the radio now. Let's see how well I can do this one-handed. That did not fix the issue. Uh, next easiest one is gonna be this door panel here. Ah, ha, ha. There we go. So, it appears that this Passenger side door module is uh, shorting up the CAN bus. Now it should, it should start acting up again when we plug it back in. And sure enough. Excellent. We've been dealing with this vehicle for about three weeks now. Finally got it to act up. Perfect.